Hades is a roguelike game that was in beta for a good bit before it finally released in September of this year, and while The Last of Us 2 is somehow a controversial topic, I don't care how good or bad it is because I really think that Hades should have been game of the year. I want to start by saying I don't play a lot of rogue games or roguelite games or whatever they're called, so if any of you guys comment telling me about how I forgot to mention some other roguelite game, then you're a hoe. I have played The Binding of Isaac though, and while I did enjoy that game, I couldn't really get into it, but maybe it's just because I was bad. But the gameplay in Hades is amazing, and while it does have some similarities to The Binding of Isaac, it's only the good ones. Anyway, before I start getting ahead of myself, what the heck is Hades? Well, first of all, it's based on Greek mythology, which should be apparent from the name of the game. Every character in this game comes from Greek mythology and the storylines are pretty much completely consistent with the canon Greek lore, and I personally like that kind of stuff a lot, which already makes this game really cool. It has all your classic Greek guys like Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Skeleton Man. You play as Zagreus, who is the son of Hades, and uh, if you're unaware, Hades is the ruler of the underworld. But luckily, you don't have to be a Greek mythology expert to appreciate how cool this game is, because not only is a lot of stuff cool on its own, but the game adds a unique charm to it all, which makes it appealing for everyone. The basic concept of the gameplay is that Zagreus wants to escape the underworld to the surface of the earth, which is something supposedly impossible. Your hub world is the deepest part of the underworld where you and Hades live, but once you leave to the first area of the game, your journey slash escape begins. Similarly to the Binding of Isaac, you go through your quest one room at a time where a bunch of enemies will spawn that you have to kill before progressing. Also like the Binding of Isaac, you get choices that you get to choose which reward you get in the next room, which is always nice. Sometimes you have to face an extra boss or an extra challenge in order to get a big reward while you have some lesser rewards you get without a boss fight as a choice, which does come in handy a lot, especially for roguelike games. The rewards range from lots of different things like upgrades to your weapons or gold coins or even gods from Olympus using their superpowers to help you out. There are also these chaos areas where you can lose health to enter a secret area giving you a special upgrade that first causes you to get downgraded for a bit. Kinda like that one game. Of course, none of the upgrades stay with you once you die because of what kind of game this is except for the darkness crystals and the gems which can be used to buy permanent upgrades for your character. So the idea is for Zagreus to continue to find his way out of the underworld through all of his challenging levels no matter how how many times it takes because since you're already in the underworld, when you die you just respawn. Which also might have to do with him being a demigod. There are three main levels of heck, being Tartarus which is where you start and the deepest level of heck, Asphodel which is the next one and covered in lava, followed by Elysium which I think is really cool and a well done portrayal of the Greek canon. At the end of each of these sections is a boss that you have to face of course, but once you pass Elysium you run into the big three headed dog Cerberus blocking your path, but luckily he's actually your pet and you know how to deal with him. Unluckily though, you need to get some dude's sack by going through a maze of surprisingly hard challenge rooms and even some bosses. But once the puppy dog gets out of your way, you have one last obstacle standing in your way at the surface, being Hades himself getting ready to fight you. Don't worry though, I'm not spoiling the game, there's a ton of story I'm not going to get into that's all really good, but you're meant to escape the underworld multiple times, it's the point of the game, so if any of you comment about spoilers, you're a hoe. So those are the basics of Hades, and of course I'm going to talk about them in more detail in this video because that's, that's the point of the video, and you guys better not get mad at me telling me I'm taking too long because you're the one who didn't know about Hades in the first place. Looking more at the gameplay since it's the most important part of any game, well except for The Last of Us 2 apparently, it is amazing in pretty much every aspect it can possibly be. Lots of reviews always bring up the feel of a game, like wow I really feel like Spider-Man in that one PlayStation game I forgot the name of. And this game feels perfectly smooth the entire way through with the way you can dash and slice through enemies with different attacks. There are different weapons you can unlock other than the base sword which are all extremely fun to use and surprisingly different. Other than the sword there's a shield, some gloves, a spear, a bow and arrow, and a gun. Each of these weapons encourages a different playstyle by having specific and well-balanced strengths and weaknesses. I personally hate using the bow because I like to play aggressive and in order to properly use the bow, you can't play like that. But also because every other weapon attacks by pressing the attack button, while the bow and arrow is the only weapon requiring you to hold down the attack button for a minute before attacking, which obviously isn't that serious, but it is disorienting considering every other weapon is the other way. Each of these weapons also comes from Greek mythology by the way. I'm not going to continue to mention this, but literally everything in this game came from Greek mythology. Mythology. Not to say there aren't any original ideas or anything like that because the originality comes from both the actual gameplay and their creative take on the parts of Greek mythology they used in the game. Not only that, but the way the Greek lore is seamlessly incorporated into the gameplay is really cool because you're not just fighting random monsters in this random place, you're fighting these demons and lost souls from Tartarus that Plato spoke about. Though that guy is a moron according to a certain Sicilian man. But regardless of all that, just look at the gameplay. I know it can look a bit chaotic at times, but when you're in the moment and actually playing the game, it all makes sense. Like 
like a dream right before you're about to wake up. But the most important part about all this is that it's extremely fun using all these mechanics in these beautifully crafted areas of the underworld. A lot of times roguelikes can end up feeling repetitive for obvious reasons, but the progression through the levels of heck is done perfectly with not only each individual room being unique, but also each of the three areas being extremely different with both scenery, atmosphere, and enemies. Hades is fairly challenging, especially at first due to there being a very scarce amount of health pickups. Naturally, there is no way to heal and enemies do not drop health, so you either have to buy some with your gold or get some kind of ability that'll heal you. The way you spend your gold in this game is through the homie Sharon, who is the boatman of the River of Sticks. Uh, if you've ever seen Percy Jackson, this is the dude that burns federal United States currency. This dude shows up as an icon on some of the doors of your run, and when you pull up, there are no enemies, just him and his shop with three items. These rooms always come in clutches, especially if you're in need of health because it's basically just a free pit stop plus a power up if you can afford it. The bosses at the end of each area also aren't too bad for the most part. The first area's boss is one of three different furies, not to be confused with furries, and they're all fairly easy to take care of once you get the hang of it. The boss at the lava land is a bone hydra that can be tricky at first, but again, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. But the boss of Elysium is actually very challenging and a run killer if you don't have enough good upgrades. In this fight, you fight two dudes at once. Well, one dude is a minotaur, but you get the idea. My personal strat is to go ham on the minotaur and hope that the other dude misses me with his spears because they do a ton of damage when you get hit. Once you end up getting past those guys though, you end up at yet another run killer being the Seder Tunnels. Basically, there are five doors, each with several different challenge rooms in them, and each has a one in five chance to contain the sack needed to distract the puppy dog. If you get lucky or have a lot of health upgrades, then you can get by with ease, but like, sometimes you just get cheesed. Lots of these enemies have poison and cause you to very rapidly lose health, and like I said before, health items are very hard to come by, so taking through all five of these rooms just because of bad RNG is a very common run killer. Then of course there is Hades himself, who is also a very common run killer, but let's get back to him towards the end of the video. But when it comes to game of the year, for some reason it seems like they care more about the story than the gameplay, you know, unless your name is Breath of the Wild. So let's take a look at one of the more surprisingly good aspects of Hades, which is the characters. I've already said a million times this is all from Greek mythology, so how do you turn these things into an entertaining story? Okay, Greek professors, please stop commenting right now or else I'm gonna- Well, obviously you make them 2D, since everyone likes 2D people, right? Well, the good art style of course doesn't hurt, but the high quality voice acting is also an unexpected nice touch that makes everything vibe well together. The way you're able to interact with the characters and learn more about them I think is the main reason it works so well though. You're pretty much able to have one story progressing conversation per attempt at escaping hell, and of course I say that loosely. The hub world is fairly small, so once you talk to a character about the things they wanted to tell you, they'll just ignore you until you do your business. Not only does this give you more incentive to play the game and more reasons to explore between runs, but it puts the idea in your head that progressing these characters equals good, which is true. The thing that ties it all together though is the nectar that can be found as a reward in some of the chambers. Nectar is forbidden in the underworld, but everyone still loves it and uses it apparently. So nectar is weed. And once you give someone nectar, you gain one heart in your relationship status progress like you would in Stardew Valley, and of course getting all the hearts creates a bond. There there are different things that happen with each of the characters when you do this, as I'm sure you can imagine, but it's extremely fun to do, and the first time you do it with any character, they give you a bonus keepsake that gives you a buff on your run when you equip it. There's a bunch of them, so go play the game and find out what they do for yourself. Stop asking me. But of course, the in-game rewards aren't the only thing encouraging you to form relationships with these characters, as they all have their own unique personalities and reasons why you might want to be friends with them. You're able to give nectar to pretty much anyone in the game who isn't a boss, and also one of the Fury bosses. I'm not going to list every single character in the game for you guys, but I will talk about a lot because so many of them are so good. Just to go over the Olympian gods that help you by giving you powers real quick, there are nine of them in total that show up to help you throughout your journey. Being Zeus, Poseidon, Athena, Aphrodite, Artemis, Ares, Dionysus, Hermes, and later even Demeter. Each of these guys give you buffs throughout your runs related to their godly powers. Zeus gives you some cool lightning buffs, while Athena gives you reflection abilities on your attacks or dashes, which is one of the best abilities in the game. There are other characters that help you out besides the gods though that show up in the reward chambers. These guys each only show up in their respective area of hell due to the Greek canon, but that also happens to make each area feel even more unique. In the first area, Sisyphus from the Greek legend of infinitely pushing a rock up a hill in hell is sitting at the bottom of the hill with the rock ready to greet you. He gives you either gold, health, or darkness, which is used for perma upgrades, and this man Sisyphus always comes in clutch with the goods. I don't even know where or how he gets them, but it's the good stuff, trust me. In Asphodel, aka Norfair in Greek, the character that helps you out is Eurydice, from another famous Greek story involving Orpheus. She sings her song and bakes you cookies, which is a nice refreshment from the literal hellscape surrounding you, especially since the cookies upgrade your upgrades to be even better. In Elysium, you run into the homie Patroclus, who's friends with Achilles. 
you know, the heel guy. And Achilles lives back home at spawn with you, but Patroclus is in Elysium handing out goodies and he has the best ones in the entire game. One of his goodies restores all of your death defiances, which are basically like extra lives you can earn from attempting to escape a lot and upgrading Zagreus. All of these characters are more than unique despite being technically unoriginal, which might not make sense, but all I'm saying is they're all perfectly crafted in a breath of fresh air from the endless slaying of demons in hell. So all of that is great, of course, the game looks like a good game, but any game can be good. Not any game can be game of the year though, when while technically Hades can't be either, that doesn't mean I can't disagree, cause this is my channel so I'm right. I've avoided talking about the overall story due to spoilers, and I still will, but it needs to be brought up for the sake of the argument. Story is clearly very important in video games, and in a lot of my videos I preach about how gameplay should be a bigger priority, and well, yeah, that's still true, that doesn't mean that the story is unimportant. Not only are the story and characters perfectly executed to be an amazing reimagination of millennia old tales, but it really makes you forget this is even a roguelike. Of course, the levels will still be the same each time you play with different enemies, but running into different characters every time and getting to know them more and more changes that and makes it feel like it's one big adventure, which it really is. I've already put almost 30 hours into this game, and I've only just recently completed the main quest, and not the main finale or whatever the complete story is. I also haven't even unlocked an entire ability apparently, along with several weapon variations, so even with 30 hours into this rogue game, I still have tons of time to play it and experience new things, which is rare for this genre. The characters are all also extremely good looking and create moves just with a single PNG, but no character pulls it off to the extent of Hades himself during this game. Not only is he the strict over overlord of the underworld, but he's a giant spear-wielding god that literally stands in your way of escaping hell, the place Hades specifically made inescapable. There are tons of games that build up all this hype for the final boss fight only for it to be a dud, but don't worry, Hades doesn't do that at all. The boss fight with Hades always has a chance of being a run-ender with how challenging it is, but it never seems unfair like a lot of other hard games. You have plenty of chances to attack Hades and every possible chance to dodge, it's just difficult, which is exactly how the final boss to any game should be. Of course, I'm not going to show you guys what happens if you beat Hades, so just go get the game and see for yourself. While I don't have an uncle who works in Nintendo, or any form of prestigious nepotism related to the gaming world, I still think Hades should have been game of the year, and it's ridiculous that it wasn't. Though I haven't even played The Last of Us 2 if I'm being honest. I got my city doing front flips, when everybody